It's a perfect day on Bondi Beach. Hot air, warm water, a puff of wind and a playful swell. There they go, then they're in ankle deep water. Conditions are amazing, it's almost Mediterranean like. Just the way the sandbanks have formed are quite unique. We've had a big swell over the last couple of weeks and that's really worn away the, the sand itself and it's caused like little islands. Over two million visitors head to Bondi every summer and this is what they come for. Unfortunately, some get much more than they bargain for. Uh, Paul Essentials, Black Rhino, you got a kid with a... Uh, he might have a dislocated elbow. Might bring down the whistle. Copy that, Jay. Chappers, en route. Alex is a backpacker on holiday from Italy. His first go at body surfing ended with a dislocated elbow. No, no, I'm here at all. Yaxi Spanish is the next best thing to Italian. Lifeguards break out the green whistle, a powerful analgesic. Dislocations can be excruciatingly painful. A long way from home and in extreme pain, Alex gets agitated. After a few minutes on the green whistle, Alex's mood suddenly lightens. <laughs> They're good, those green whistles, aren't they? <laughs> this is good. Italy, <laughs> man. Yeah. I think he was just high. Don't, you know, he forgot about his injury. <laughs> he started gibbering in Swahili, you know, a bit of Japanese, I think. A bit of French, Italian, English, Spanish. He was all over the place after that. But the main thing was that it took his mind off his, off his pain. AM. The gentle breeze has shifted into a sweltering westerly from the inland. It's 32 degrees and rising. The sand is even hotter. Sensible footwear is the order of the day. It is bloody hot today. It's got to be 35 near 40 degrees and the wind's blowing out of the west which is the hottest wind and it's humid as well it's just sticky it's awful then a first casualty of the heat what is it Yoshi? um someone's collapsed down there as is down there a woman appears unconscious on the sand Azza and robbo investigate do you want to sit up for us? Yeah. Want to sit up? Hey, mate. We're having a chat with you. See what's going on. Some of the people are worried about you. Yeah. Hey? Having a sleep, mate. Just having a sleep, yeah? Yeah, she seems to be OK. She, uh, I think she just fell asleep in the sun after too many drinks or whatever she's on. The member of the public was concerned. For, they were watching her for a while and her face was in the sand and she started inhaling sand into her mouth. If she lay there any longer in the sun, she could have got really highly dehydrated and, you know, ramifications from that aren't too good. If nothing else, the woman's been saved from damaging sunburn. <laughs> it's near midday and still getting hotter. It's really uh, up around the mid-30s already and haven't hit midday. Certainly heat-related injuries are what we're looking out for today. We've got to be pretty smart about the way we operate or we're going to burn out by 7 o'clock tonight, that's for sure. We're going to get close to 40 degrees today, so the guys have got to, um, you know, make sure they keep the fluids up and make sure they use their energy economically. The next heat casualty soon comes along. She's not looking too good, are they? Nah. Uh, Queen Elizabeth Drive, nearest cross street is Queen's John's put her on the oxygen, got her feet up on her back and took her blood pressure, which is very high. It's not good. And this has happened to her before, apparently. 
She was just overloaded. She took she took too much of it. She took her stuff and the kids' stuff, and she just it was just too much of a load for her. Yeah, you look heaps better. Magic. Yeah, she looks. She's doing a lot better. Oxygen's unreal. It's like having a Red Bull. Here they come. He's quick, mate. Now I've got to bring up my husband and tell him, come and help me. So much for Nahid's relaxing swim with her daughter and grandchildren. As the mercury climbs even higher, so does the toll. Do you have a spear, mate? Heat exhaustion can cause vomiting, headaches and cramps. In severe cases, it can kill. More at risk are children and the elderly. By one o'clock, there have been a dozen victims and four ambulance calls. Then, lifeguards are called to yet another unconscious patient. But this one is suffering from much more than dehydration. A beach guy has been found unconscious in Bondi's changing rooms. Mate, can you call an ambo? Bit of a drug overdose. Uh, ambulance, please. The victim is a teenage boy. Lifeguards need to keep him out of the sweltering heat and begin treating him with oxygen. What do you reckon you collapse? Four. Oh, Eight. <coughs> Nothing else. <coughs> oh, God, God, God. Yeah, what do you... What have you had? This is speed and pot. Speed and pot. And this has never happened to you before when you've taken that? No. No? Must be a strong batch, eh? The boy and his companion had only met the night before on a train from Newcastle. We were walking around Central and then it just started getting hot, so we are like, we're going to the beach. But I didn't think it, it'd end up like this. G'day, g'day, here we are again. Yeah, this is a shame. So I had some drugs on the weekend? Yeah. OK, what did you take? Oh. OK. Having trouble coming down, or...? I don't know. No? Paramedic Ben checks the boy's blood glucose levels and tries to get to the bottom of what happened. Was he definitely unconscious, mate, for a while? You couldn't wake him? I pretty much had to, like, literally <laughs> shake him. Did he wake when you shook him? Nah, pretty much had to yell at him. I woke him up the last time and he didn't know where he was. He was taking a drink, apparently, and that's when he blacked out and then hit his head on a concrete pillar. You, you fell down and you hit your head on a concrete pillar. Right, you got any pain in your neck or anything? No. Good. All righty. Yeah, all right, mate. We're going to take you up to the hospital. All right, how old are you? Oh. 14. Gee, starting early. Eh? <laughs> We're going to head up to the children's hospital. Kind of weird taking a patient on uh, hard drugs up to the children's, but they're actually used to it. <laughs> See you later. All right. Bondi, where the city and all its problems meets the sea. You sign up to be a lifeguard and then you're attending to drug overdoses on the beach. It's sort of sad in a way, you know, you hope that stuff sort of doesn't make its way down here. It's uh, pretty bad to think what society sort of, what's happening in society. In the blazing heat, beachgoers are so anxious to cool off, many disregard safety warnings. Come back to shore. There is a dangerous current forming. Attention swims. We want people to use the red and yellow flag. Do not swim here. Hundreds of metres from the safety of the flags, a man struggles against a powerful rip. Just give him up, mate. How you going? You need a pick up, you know? How you going, mate? Even a powerful swimmer would be no match for the rip. Essentially, the black rhino, that rip looks like it's charged, and that guy looks like he's a pretty good swimmer. Yeah, having a fair bit of trouble. And yeah, Michael's going in now. Mouse heads in. Thank you. Go on, mate. Are you 
you're going good, it's just that current. You're going all right, just can't break that current, eh? Get on strong. Let's get on quick before we get on this reef, eh? The rip pushes Mouse and his patient precariously close to the rocks. Time is of the essence. <laughs> Jump on, put your chest on. Go left, that's it. Car the way. Now, directly above the reef, Mouse thinks he finally has the man safely aboard. Hey, mate, you're gonna have to lay down, eh? But not so. Chest, feet. One, two, three. Good, good son. Good son, feet on that. After much trial and error, they finally head for shore. The old bloke was a bit confused, I think he had to get on. But it's like he was caught, and then yeah. if you don't get him on that quick, they just, out yeah, they yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. He's from Ireland. God bless him. Tony's first swim at Bondi <laughs> Beach is one he'll long remember. We had strong ocean currents in Ireland, but um, like being the weather it is and things like that, you'd only swim probably two or three months of the year or something like that, so your swimming technique, you wouldn't get enough of time to practice it as such, you know? I thought I was pretty, um, said it to him in pretty plain English to put his chest here and his, and his legs back here. But I don't know, he didn't get it, but I mean, you know, it's not his fault. People start to panic and they just want the board and, you know, they're out of breath. It happens all the time, but it happened about five times in a row then, which is a bit special. Disregarding directions is a common problem. Ball games are banned on Bondi for the risk that they pose to other beachgoers. The regulation is difficult to police, but sometimes games stop for other reasons. How are you for pain, mate? Is it a lot of noise that I can handle it? Lifeguards attend what at first appears to be a simple stubbed toe. We'll just drive you straight to the tower. Bob is on a working holiday from Scotland. He arrived in Australia just a week ago. Playing soccer and just accidental. Kind of clashed, clashed feet with somebody else. OK, what kind of pain are you in here to 10? Oh, it's not so It's not so I can feel it. It's a good... I, just, I don't really want to... Touch it. Uh, okay. Lifeguards deal with hundreds of different injuries, but this is unlike anything they've ever seen. It's a doozy. Um, it kick your toe that badly that the bones actually come through. Yeah. So that's why we need you to go to hospital, mate. So it's gone quite a fair bit down, hasn't it? Feeling woozy at all? Nah. Lifeguards are amazed by the Scottish Braveheart. Just remember got that barbecue right now. It's all right, mate. Okay. The volleyball's at the question. In case the pain does it kick in, lifeguards give sucker. Bob the green whistle. Suck in it. <sighs> You're a tough man. I, I, if I looked at that, I'd cry if it was me. No, just... I kind of cried when it was you. <laughs> Imagine it was me. Yeah. I've had trials for Sydney FC because I've seen the quality of the football that obviously <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the side of Bob's toe has lifeguards rattled. I've had broken legs, everything like that, you know? Heavy, heavy gashes. Death. That toe heavy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Maxi takes the opportunity to learn a new language. Teach me some of the accent. Maybe I could pull it off. How are you doing, darling? Is it right? Huh? How are you doing, darling? What are you doing tonight? How are you doing What are you doing tonight? Uh, Does that sound right? No, nah, it's not doing bit. I'm tired. Bob's dream to play for Sydney FC is on hold. He'll require surgery to repair his fractured toe. Say, Bob. Hi. Lifeguards spend more time preventing injuries than treating them. Swim over to your right, you'll get in. Swim over to the bank. Over that way. Reedy and Bisho direct a group of swimmers out of a rip and to the safety of a nearby sandbank. The boy out the back, totally ignoring me, swim to your right. You're panicking, aren't you? Bisho thinks the man can make it on his own. It's all right. Mate, that was his best. Boys, that bloke um, furthest away from the bank, he's starting to pull some pretty weird heads. 
He doesn't realise he's about two metres from a sandbag. He's be able to stand up very soon. He's freaking out. Attention the guy in the back doing breaststroke there, mate. If you keep going toward your right, as your friends did earlier, you'll be fine. In the tower, the Mouse decides way. it's time to act. Yeah, I reckon it's worth going in for that one. so close to the bank, but he's not, I think he's starting to panic, he's not listening to the boys, I think Reedy's just going to get him. I hope Andrew gets denied. Stand up, buddy. You're on your feet. Look. Magic. As Bisho predicted, the man makes it onto the sandbank. You're coming home empty-handed. <laughs> While Reedy doesn't perform a rescue, he decides to deliver a lecture. He's going to go back out, is he? <laughs> Straight across. We were trying to tell you to go onto the sandbank. You wouldn't listen. Go to your right. You're right. Yeah, I know. Next time, swim between the red and yellow flag. Cool. Nice day. Why not get, get wet, I guess? Well, I don't like to do that because in case something happens and we need two lifeguards, then it just leaves me. I can't do a whole beach. I'll probably two. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Andrew. How are you doing anything? But, yeah. I was explaining what not to do and you, you did. What I did? I wanted to get wet. <laughs> if I had a body like that, I'd leave my shirt on. <laughs> Moments later, a far more serious situation unfolds in the south corner. This time, there's no hesitation. Yeah, get in there, Bish. She's, uh, she's holding him up. Swimmers struggle to keep afloat in a deep hole close to shore. Another swimmer is in a rip further out. Reedy races to help. A surfer reaches the first group as Reedy goes straight past to rescue their friend. The rip has dragged him 40 metres away. He's in serious trouble. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, no, no. Continue. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. No, no, no. You're going to turn around that way. Yeah. Lay on your stomach. Her cheeks hammered out the back look on, on Reddy's board. It's not even a cheek, it's a flag. You OK? The surfer grabbed the three on the shore, and then there was another one right at the back. A guy who looks extremely exhausted, and Reedy's got him. The guy's just laying there like, like a dead body. I'm sure he's alive. Thanks, guys. Yes. Come on, come on. Yes. Okay. You okay? Now yeah. safe. The other swimmers are concerned for their friend. Yeah, he's okay. He's still not moving. Yeah, he's looking terrible. Yeah. You alright? Yeah. What's happened? Yeah. You're too tired. Yeah, too tired. Too tired? Yeah. 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 It's alright. Yeah, yeah. You got a next time when you're swimming. When you come to Bondi and you go swimming, you have to swim between the red and yellow flag. Hu Jian Li is a 28-year-old student from Korea who has suddenly found his saviour. Ah, uh, yes, like a Jesus. I feel like I'm with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah, he's the, he saved my life. Yeah. No, don't hug me. Yeah. <laughs> That's not worth a hug. In Australia, we don't man hug. We just shake, just shake. Yeah. Shake. Yes, and a little kiss. Yeah. No, 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 Jack. Yeah. <laughs> 
힘이 다 빠졌었어, 내가. 야, 이거 한국 방송에 안 나오는 건 아니지? 아, 호주 방송이. 호주 방송. He should definitely go and get swimming lessons, but he doesn't swim at all. Well, he floated pretty good. And to another point, I often come to Bondi Beach and wear a helmet when I'm walking on the beach. <laughs> Hi, helmet man. Broken toes and heat stroke, near drownings and religious conversions. A day of surprises comes to a close. Just when lifeguards get a chance to relax, an emergency in the tower. <laughs> Blood sucking leeches are not local to Bondi. No one knows where it has come from. Chapo is the prime suspect. He's just come back from a trip to the bush. Quickly, get nerd. Get nerd. They could be on your ass. Fool, it's been sucking you on. Chapo, take your shoes off. Must be. <laughs> this is Chapo's leech. <laughs> well, it's going to be our new pet. Oh. From Chips. Chips the leech. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Get rid of it, mate. Yeah, just keep looking at it. Oh. <laughs> Next time on Bondi Rescue. Um, I'll just try to patch him up. World's worst surfers one minute, the world's best the next. Oh.